The vertical rising of the magma has started in the uh, Swartzengi volcanic system. We see it in this uh, earthquake chart, which shows the depth and the magnitude of the earthquakes. And uh, based on that, we can see that the, the stage that the lateral movement of the magma chart has passed. Magma is now going vertical. This is an important diagram. It shows how many days has passed since the start of the swelling up of each stage of the eruption under the Swartzengi, when the magma was accumulating, how many days passed then, the lateral movement of the magma starts, means horizontally moving toward the east, toward the Sundunka craters. The lowest red line shows the uh, since how many days has passed since the last eruption and the start of the rise in the magma under Swartzengi. The small circle shows it at the uh, 21st of the February, and since then we have passed uh, four days, and we are now at the rectangle, which shows the date of today. And uh, we usually have around five, four days after that, uh, the eruption happening. So in this case, it seems 20 days, 21 days after the sort of the uh, um, uplift of the land due to the magma accumulation since the last eruption. It will be a, a valid point for the rising of the magma and the sort of the new eruption. As you can see, in the previous eruptions, we had three to five days lag every time uh, starting quicker because the magma was already available. It didn't need to go down completely before it starting again to accumulate. This is the source of the magma, which is the top part of the mantle. As the earth crust is pulled away, extended, the whole mantle rises and uh, partially melts and forms magma that uh, can erupt through a reservoir, which it seems in the, is in the, under the Swartzengi. Uh, according to the Professor Thorvald Thorvaldson, the area under the Swartzengi seems is malleable. I, I use the word malleable. He used the word plasticity. Uh, it seems that it just uh, inflates and deflates. It cannot erupt through there. But it can directly, like a tap, according to him, toward the east Sundunka craters. And this is where the dikes are located, the weaknesses in the ro rocks, which are fault lines, in the gravel, the rift valley, and then from there uh, uh, starts to erupt. We are not in that stage, as I showed that from the depth of five kilometer, this tap is actually opening up and the magma is rising vertically now. It has been moved laterally, now it's moving vertically. It may erupt somewhere like this red area that I uh, marked, or less priority, maybe toward that yellow area, Stora Skogofel, or near the Sundunka, uh, lower part of it, or Hagofel, there's a small chance also inside the north part of the Grindavik. The waves of the earthquakes we see that are accommodating the displacement to the, due to the extension of the uh, earth crust here. This is the strike slip falls, which forms practically this bodinaged or sausage-shaped uh, structures. We call them rift valleys of this volcanic system. Every one of them we can call a volcanic system. The caterpillar effect, either to the werewolf or due to the machinery being turned off, or, as I believe is probably due to the tide, is affecting and started. It cannot be due to the workers, you know, turning on and off, because we now see that the, there is a snowstorm and probably nobody is working. But we know that it's now near the full moon. Full moon is the time that we have a highest tide. Moon and the sun are the opposite side. Geologists are a little bit reluctant to accept the tidal heating, the effect of it. But in the planetary geology, we actually know that such a thing, for example, in the Io, the satellite of Jupiter is quite possible. We see it, we saw it in the Voyager images. We see it in Galileo and the Juno also. And these are the hottest spots we see there. Tectonics probably on the planet Earth has started like that. And I believe since 1970 and 80s that it has maintained it since then. In the Enceladus, which is a satellite of the uh, Saturn, we see a very similar case of volcanism with actually volcanic systems and the rift valleys, similar to what we have in the uh, uh, Reckonus Peninsula of Iceland. Very interesting to study that in that case. Unfortunately, we don't have any spacecraft in that area. But we have the Iceland. We can study it there. Uh, volcanism and the rift valleys formed, and the fissures, quite similar to what we have now here. You will be surprised to know that the Blue Lagoon is actually fully booked, and a lot of people are just going there just to be uh, enjoying the time that they can enjoy in that area, 
winter snowstorm and hot water under you <laughs> practically and also at the same time maybe have an added bonus of uh, witnessing a volcanic eruption nearby at a from a safe distance these are some pretty pictures i'm showing you may depict something like the vertical rise of the magma within the dike or those crushed zones which call the fault lines through that uh, sunduka crater series in the sourcing area and uh, there is a possibility we have the eruption before the wednesday and earlier even and uh, the least chance of it which is actually happening probably in march early march but is most likely that it will happen in this week before the 20th of the february which is wednesday let's wait and see i'm, I'm impatient also monitoring the situation to report it and those pretty pictures were actually produced by the artificial intelligence AI. And so this is the, how, how, how the world is going that direction. We can imagine everything. We don't need to be, to be a Van Gogh or anything like that. We have an AI.